you'll have to forgive me. I was going to make a different video tonight, but you're going to have to expect that one for tomorrow. But as a teaser, I just want to go ahead and show you real quick. <laughs> That's all you get to see for now. <laughs> With all that said, though, I wanted to make a sort of full on resource, a video that I can point people to when I am talking about the Bara Magna expansion project. What is it? I've talked about it briefly in, well, a handful of different videos, but I haven't made a video talking about what it encompasses entirely. So that's kind of the purpose of this one. Now, this is unscripted, so I'm surely going to forget something, and it's honestly just kind of off the cuff because of a comment that I just happened to get. Someone took the last video as meaning that I was going to be making my own Bionicle Wave, which they're not actually wrong, but not for Generation 2, at least not yet. Do you have plans for that? That's going to come up way further down the road. But the Bar Magna expansion project, as I described in previous videos, is essentially a what if. What if Bionicle didn't end in 2010? Now, that's not to say that we didn't get the sets that came out in 2010. In fact, I'm building upon that. So essentially, if all of the events that happened to Bionicle Generation 1 still happened, we still got a Titan Toa Matanui, we still got the Bionicle Star Sets, pushing those off to the side, treating them as maybe special edition, 10th anniversary, celebrate, whatever you want to call them, okay? Looking at it like this instead, along with those sets, what if we got a wave of sets for Bar Magna after the Reformation, after the defeat of Makuta, after... Whatever, right? So here is the idea. And it is a different wave. It does play into Bara Magna as a concept. Having both villains and characters amongst the same ensemble of characters, right? Waves previously would often be either heroes one half of the year, villains another half of the year, or in 2008 would split it and do half and half. And that's cool stuff too. But this time around, Bar Magna did something interesting because it introduced villains and heroes, heroes if you want to call them that, amongst the same wave. But it didn't, let's say, officially designate them, at least not in terms of the aesthetics of the character. Sure, you can look at something like Scrawl and very easily tell that it is evil, but you could just as easily have seen it as just a more elementally in-tune character than something like maybe Terex or something, right? So I really like and appreciate that idea. So here is kind of everything in a nutshell. First of all, how many sets will there be? Well, if you were to go to the store today and buy canister sets from 2010, from the Bara Magna expansion project, you would see on the shelves nine Glatorian figures, not six. However, typically in a year of Bionicle, you would get 12 canister sets. So in theory, this is actually less canister sets than a full year. But in so doing, these are slightly larger, more pieces in general, more dedicated pieces and a larger parts budget. This means that you can kind of go out of your way and design these characters to a more, more fuller form. If I want to actually go ahead and look over for a second at Israkoth over there in the yellow, the dragon-like character, that is just one example of what you could expect out of canister sets. He's a much more dedicated build than a Glatorium, but he's not a crazy amount more pieces. He's not a hundred more pieces. He's maybe 15. So you would expect nine different canister sets Roughly about that size. I don't know where I'm pointing. Right there. <laughs> Roughly about that size on store shelves. Of these nine sets, they would be broken up into three factions. We're just going to call it that for now, but this doesn't necessarily ascribe their allegiance to anything. Rather, these factions are just kind of how they are stylistically. So three of these sets would be, well, pirate-themed and kind of a steampunk overarching theme across all nine of the sets but three of them specifically this pirate theme the other three i say other like there are only six but there are nine another three would be what i call high crafts what is high crafts that's harder to describe to be honest but it basically means an ornate style someone described it as art nouveau and i can kind of see that 
I look at characters like Terex for this example, a character that looks very well polished and has some pretty ornate pieces, the helmet looking very regal in its design, obviously a heavier emphasis on gold, and gold is also an emphasized color for this wave, although I guess silver and gunmetal for that matter would also show up here as well. The third faction would be dinosaur and dragon inspired characters. These are not characters that are dinosaurs but rather take on the appearance they are essentially <sighs> zealots of <laughs> the dinosaurs the dragons of the world of bar magna bota magna etc as i mentioned it's reformed right and so this is where you find a character like Izerkoth, a character that wears this dragon-esque armor but he's not a dragon in and of himself he is still just a glatorian at the end of the day and i really enjoy him now, this wave of characters would also include new molds and, in fact, would somewhat try to fit into the yearly parts budget of LEGO's past years, meaning that I can't make 100 new molds, but I could potentially make 50. I know 50 new molds sounds like a lot, but it's actually not, not for a wave of Bionicle, not, or rather, not for a full year of Bionicle. It's... Definitely towards the upper limit, sure, but it is a standard that had been set in the past. The Baraki year, for example, 2007, had a lot of new molds. 2009 also did. But what else is there? Obviously, we know that a wave of Bionicles does not just entail Glatorian or Canister sets. There are also Matoran, there are vehicles, there are Titans, etc. And all of that appears here as well. Nine Aguri characters will also appear amongst these. The reason I pick nine also... I want to mention is because I see Barra Magna as a world of nine elements. This doesn't necessarily mean that all of the characters have elemental powers, though the story comes later, and we'll get into that in its own separate video. Rather, I see this as villages ascribed to elements, much in the same way as they were on Barra Magna, whether or not the characters had elemental abilities. So you had a jungle village, you had a sand village, and etc. This would be the six original elements fire earth stone air water and ice and three elements from bara magna sand maybe but that could definitely be stone iron earth and jungle so let's just get rid of sand for a moment also nine because i have at least the idea for nine elemental lords and nine elemental beasts. Those come later, though. Those are not a part of the Bar Magna expansion project, but rather a project to come later. So now we're up to nine Agori characters, nine Glatorian characters. What about the vehicles or Titans box sets in general? Well, there's actually 10. Why 10? Well, there's going to be three land-based vehicles, including the Sandstorm, which I've made a video on in the past, which is a set that continues to receive updates because I want to give it steering, to be honest. It's a lovely-looking set in general, though. Also, the Ornithopter, a sky vehicle. There are three sky vehicles as well. Each of these are also small, medium, and large, I should mention. So, a small land vehicle, a medium land vehicle, large land vehicle. Same with air. Small, air, medium, air, large, air. Then lastly, you have three box set dinosaurs and one box set dragon that gives you your tenth. Now, that's not to say that vehicles can't cross over, can't appear in other sets. And it's not to say that Glatorian and Agori won't appear in these box sets as well. Of course they will. So not only will you get the nine Glatorian sets from the shelf, let's say, but you'll also get some Glatorian appearing in these box sets much the same way as you would see in 2008 and 2009 having glatorian or having toa or avmatorian or agori appearing in those box sets as well giving us more than 12. so in reality here the bar magna expansion project would likely see a full set of 12 glatorian a full set of 12 agori or even potentially more in both scenarios as well as three box set dinosaurs, but also probably some small dinosaurs. Something I have not yet mentioned, at least not in this video, is that one of those Agori is actually going to be a dinosaur as well. The Agori of Sand, which is a little bit pretentious in my opinion, 
because Sand only ever received up until this point animal-like characters, Vorox and Zesk, and so there aren't any helmets from the Sand characters that work well on human-esque, Glatorian-like characters, right? It's not to say you can't use them. I love using the Vorox helmet backwards, for example, but that's just a concept. So instead here, in this scenario, with the dinosaur head that I came up with, I actually designed it to be reversible, much the same way as Syndox or, you know, Crotesius, the writer of that set, having a reversible mask, or Baroness, and the Spicket character from that, or Tellerus, same character as well, wearing the same mask that is reversible, right? Something that I think LEGO should have done a lot more with these helmets. And so I plan on designing these helmets with some reversible use cases, let's say. And that includes this sand gore. In fact, this helmet is very likely going to show up at least twice because a nice way to save budget and also give you some recolors is to use pieces more than once, which I plan to do. So far, I'm very happy with progress on this. It is definitely a project, and at the end of the day, it's not a project that I can dedicate 100% of the time to because burnout is a real thing, especially for someone like me. I am the type of person who tends to get hyperfixated on a project and then kind of push it off for a little while to pick it up again later. And so I use this channel as a form of motivation and as a form of, let's say, accountability, if nothing else, to make sure that I stay on top of my projects because it's fun. And I really enjoy doing projects like this, but it is a lot of work. You can see behind Izrakoth there a character, which is hard for me to point to, the slightly taller character with the dark red head, which is the dragon character that I've been working on for this wave as well. And there is a Glatorian, sorry, an Agori rider for that. This one is an important one because that dragon is kind of sort of the villain for the year and its rider, of course. And dragons are something that are held to high regard as well. That's a topic for another day, though. Now, the last thing I want to talk about before ending this video is gimmicks, right? Many years of Bionicle have overarching gimmicks, something to tie the sets together. 2007 had something as elaborate as, well, being underwater. And so a lot of the characters and creatures having an underwater sort of theme to them. 2008 was a little bit more vague, in concept, but at the very least had the ability to have, you know, characters mount on the backs of other characters to be, I was going to say pilots, but that's not correct. But you know what I'm saying? The ability for two characters to ride together, and that was always pretty cool. This is a lot simpler of a gimmick, but something that ties these sets together, including tying together some of these vehicles as well, is cloth pieces. Every one of the canister sets would include a cloth piece, likely a cape of some kind or some kind of neck upper shoulder area cloth. And each of these cloth pieces would be inscribed with an insignia or a signet, I guess, that essentially acts as the, well, signet <laughs> of the symbol of their respective tribe. So something like Tejin, the water tribe, or Tassara, the uh, jungle tribe, I believe, would have very specific designs. And I've actually already come up with these. These are something I came up with well over a year ago at this point, because again, it was for that Elemental Beast project. And the idea is this, A, slightly hints at what would come the year after this, 2011, I guess you would say. And that's a project for another day. But the other thing about this is, as I mentioned, having a pirate theme kind of Going overarching across all of this and a steampunk theme as well means that a lot of the airships are going to be inspired by both ornate vehicles, fantasy vehicles in general, and of course, flying pirate ships. In fact, the flagship for this wave would be a large pirate ship, roughly the size of the Axal Axalara. Maybe a little bit larger, a little bit smaller, but I still need to design that in and of itself. I've worked on designs for automatic reloading, Thorn axe launchers that work as like cannon things. It, it's a cool idea. It's definitely a difficult idea as well. But suffice to say, it's a lot of fun. And that set would obviously include sails. Again, it is a flying ship. In fact, the boat theme in general kind of goes pretty deep since all of these canister sets would have canisters that are very reminiscent of the 2008 Mystica canisters. Except instead of having the Ignika helmet, mask, whatever, as a lid, that Ignika shaped lid is also coincidentally shaped like a boat. So instead, this theme would have 
quote sheet splits. And in fact, there would even be a couple of connection points on there as well, so that you can modify them and add your own little touches as well. Some of those connection points would be pins, axle holes, etc. But also even little things like small gaps enough for the uh, Hukianika chain piece or Finrack chain piece, whatever you want to call it, to even fit on there as well to maybe mount an anchor or something. And several of the weapons are inspired by pirates as well. Hooks and uh, harpoon-like weapons, spear-like weapons, you know, uh, uh, sword, uh, like, what do pirate swords? What are the cutlasses? Whatever. Anyway, <laughs> uh, on top of all of that, you know, seeing uh, accessories to attach to uh, to masks. Uh, you could think of an eye patch. I don't know if that's going to show up, but something along those lines, or even like a pirate hat, would be really fun as well and c comedic, but entertaining at the same time. And even seeing things like characters wielding uh, uh, ship wheels you know, as a shield or anchors as a, like a flail type weapon or a throwing type weapon. It's, it's such a fun concept and I love it because it's such a, I want to say a deep dive into, there's, here's the thing, at the end of the day, and I think we all kind of feel like this, Bionicle Generation 1 ended at the very least, on a high note, I guess. But there was so much potential still left on the cutting room floor. And that's what this project is about. Realizing that potential. 2010 is all about this pirate theme. The world has just been reformed and these characters are trying to claim their piece of it. Meanwhile, 2011 brings with it the... the I don't want to spoil it too much, but the Elemental Lords reawakening after the Reformation. And... I touch on how the Reformation brings new fodder, let's say, elemental stuff <laughs> to the planet, right? My idea being that the elementals essentially consumed Bar Magda to the point it became the wasteland that it was, and thus went dormant, having nothing else to really consume. <laughs> what else can I say, you know? Having nothing else to tackle they go to a deep sleep but then the idea is that after the reformation they they can sense this new energy this new life you know bota magna's jungle world and aqua magna i guess is the water whatever the case right all, all of that stuff to feed on again this brings with it you know enhanced elemental powers not only for the glatorian but wakens these elemental beings these elemental lords and also awakens the elemental beasts at the same time as sort of a way to fend off against it's it's i like the concept that's all i can say 2011 is definitely going to be ambitious and i'm not there yet i don't even know what canister characters are there but because it's one step at a time and we're talking about we're focused on 2010 the bar magna expansion project is at the end of the day in its infancy but there's a lot going here that I'm so excited about. Something I came up with, too, before I end this video. All the way back in, I believe, 2013, though I could be wrong on that, 2012, somewhere in there, was a modification and a new set of rules for the... Bionicle Barra Magna game, right, with the Thornax launchers and the life counters and stuff that I wanted to also implement in this 2011 or 2012 storyline. Uh, essentially a way to revitalize the game, if you will. And it included this really fun build. It was like a ratchet build, and it was just a really neat thing. Anyway, I'm going to get too far ahead of myself if I continue talking on, but hopefully this answers all the questions that you do have. So remember... In terms of good versus evil, this is a lot more about neutral characters, characters that have sort of a self-motivation, and it's not to say that they're not good or at heart or not bad at heart, but rather just trying to kind of see their village get the fair share as these worlds sort of come back together. And although that does mean that like the Toa exist on this planet now and the Matoran exist on this planet now, we're not worried about them right now. This is focused, this story specifically is focused on the Glatorian, the Aguri and their interactions with this new world that they're unfamiliar with. And yeah, some of it we know, but they don't. So that's pretty much it for this one. Hopefully this answers 
the majority of your questions. As I mentioned as a brief summary, nine Glatorian canisters, nine Agori canisters, technically six vehicles, three dinosaurs, one dragon, and that's not to say the Agori and Glatorian and dragon slash dinosaurs that are small builds that come in these box sets as well. Hopefully that's enough to keep you guys excited. I'm really excited about it, but it is a long form project. And as I continue to learn to 3D model, as I continue to learn all of this stuff, as I get my 3D printer hopefully here soon and am able to start printing pieces off, I'm just so excited about this stuff, resin casting, etc. And this is not to say that this will be a real product because I am one person and the demand for something like that would be inconceivable. But it would be a lot of fun. So if you guys do enjoy this type of content, make sure to leave a like and subscribe because it does really help this channel reach further audiences. And of course, make sure that my videos are continued to be recommended to you. It also helps me, which is always nice. So thanks. <laughs> also, if you want to join in on the conversation, let's go ahead and chat in the comments below. But you can also check out the Discord for more deeper information, as well as Instagram if you want to follow me there, nearing 2,800 followers. And of course, you can help me get there, I guess. Patreon if you want to support the channel, get some perks, and maybe... I dropped the mask and maybe help pay for a 3D printer I guess, <laughs> that I already bought. All right. I'll see you all in the next one. And don't feel obligated to pay for anything. Just your eyes is enough for me. Take care.